Hello there everyone, how you doing today? I hope you're all well. Today we're going to r slash ask reddit to ask what is the dumbest rule your school ever enforced? If you enjoy the stories I have for you today, remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and check my links in the description. Now, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? My school had three staircases along a very long corridor. We were banned from using the middle staircase because it got overcrowded. The ban was lifted once they realized it only made the other two staircases just as crowded. Not being able to wear hoodies, jackets, or sweaters that lacked official school tags. I was a high school teacher for several years. Both buildings I worked in were freezing and having admin pull students out of my classroom during a 15-minute period and giving them detention instead of letting them learn is cruel and completely unnecessary, in my opinion. If you throw snowballs, you get a one-day suspension. The first long weekend after a snowfall, everyone would throw snowballs to get an additional day added to the long weekend. You had to wear your ID around your neck on a rope thing. And then the choking started. Candy canes were outlawed because you could sharpen them to a point and use them as a shiv. I went to, into a school in rural Washington. We definitely weren't somewhere that shankings were to be expected. At my kids' elementary school, students had to smile while walking in the hall. I'm sorry, but I'm just imagining a kid with the fakest smile on his face like, There is no war in Ba Sing Se in the hallways. It's just, what? I got Saturday school for missing a day of classes when I was 16. Seems reasonable, except I missed to go complete my U.S. citizenship and officially become a citizen alongside my mom. It took us 12 years to go through the legal process, by the way. That's a whole other issue. I had a note from my mother, as well as a signed official federal form they give you to explain to school slash employers why you were absent. Apparently, the only acceptable absence excuse was illness, and I got punished for becoming a citizen. And now you're one of us. Congrats! We all hate it here. Elementary school principal banned talking at lunch. If you were caught talking or even signing to someone, you had to go sit by yourself on a folding chair with no table. There was once my mom came to eat lunch with my older sister and I. The principal was like, Oh, you should go eat out in the hallway with your daughters. And she was like, nah, I'm going to sit here with my daughter and her friends and talk to them and enjoy their presence. Usually, if a parent came for lunch, the student could invite one friend to join, unless you had siblings. And then it was too many people, so you couldn't invite a friend. Anyway, one of my older sister's friends whispered to my mom that she was going to move so she wouldn't get in trouble for talking. This was a nine-year-old. Oh my god. And I thought my schools were bad. That if you say or do anything back to your bully, it becomes a mutual conflict and isn't bullying. So if they start calling you slurs and making you feel bad every day and you call them stupid once or twice, the school probably won't help. Also, dress code required school-branded hoodies. They were $50. If you wore a non-school hoodie, you got in-school suspension. That bullying rule sounds exactly like my old secondary school. Their policy was, don't retaliate, just tell a teacher. I remember one time I had a cover lesson in the main hall, and for reasons unknown, the chief bully decided it was my turn in the spotlight. As we went in, he informed me that as soon as class ended, he was going to punch me in the face. Being the scared, bullied kid I was, I went straight to the teacher and asked if I could be excused a couple of minutes early to get to my next class while avoiding a fist in the face. The teacher ignored that, cued the end of the class, I was punched, as expected, in front of said teacher. 
My mother was not amused in the least. I didn't find out until years later that she had been down to the school outside of hours, berating various teachers for their abysmal efforts to combat the bullying, which did eventually die off. After 9-11, my school instituted a zero-tolerance policy on bullying and violence. What 9-11 had to do with bullying, I don't know. Anyways, Halloween 2001. I dressed up as the guy from Clockwork Orange. He carries a cane around. The principal pulled me aside and told me walking around with a cane could be a weapon. Therefore, just walking with it is an act of violence and suspended me for a couple of days, telling me that after 9-11, we don't mess around with that kind of stuff. Poké? The new principal made a morning roundup rule where anyone arriving to class after the last bell had to go to the cafeteria and listen to a lecture about not being late for class. This took about an extra 15 minutes, making the students even more late to class than they would have otherwise been. Needless to say, everyone hated it, even the teachers. That principle did not last long. Toilet paper rationing. This was in 1997 or 98. Apparently the high school girl's room was going through too much toilet paper. So the dean, a woman, stood outside the door and distributed a few squares of one-ply institutional toilet paper to us as we went in. If she noticed toilet paper on the floor, our ration got cut down. If we asked for more, for bigger jobs, we were told to save it for home. There were several episodes of girls stuck in stalls until friends could beg for more toilet paper because of period messes or unexpected bowel incidents. The dean wouldn't even hand it over. She would go in the bathroom and pass it a few squares at a time over the door. If you didn't catch it as it fell and it landed on the floor, well, that's your fault and you're not getting any more. If you used more than she thought necessary... Tough luck. Go to class with blood and shit on your body. It took about a week of extremely angry parents coming to the school and calling both the school and the school board, but we finally got our toilet paper back. Unlimited. How did we celebrate? By toilet papering her car, of course. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. If we didn't see it, it didn't happen. All it did was train bullies to be really good at keeping their voices down and being aware of their surroundings so they could avoid doing stuff within a teacher's line of sight. It meant you were ever outside of a teacher's vision range. You were still fair games for a heap of abuse. And if you try to report things that teachers didn't see, then the teachers te treated you like you were making up BS. It also didn't stop teachers from enforcing double standards, like believing reports from their personal favorites even when they didn't see it happen, since they could just claim they saw it happen if it was contested. That school was basically a training facility to turn bullies into stealth experts. You can only have three squares of toilet paper per day. What's with schools and toilet paper? I was sent to the principal in elementary school for getting a drink of water out of line. As in, we walked down the hall in a formation and we had designated water drinking stops. To this day, I still remember the principal asking angrily, Well, what if everyone started getting water without permission? And I still don't have an answer. Um, little principal, I think I have an answer for you. We would all be hydrated, and we'd all be super healthy. I hope that answers your question. I'm sure you don't think that's a bad thing. Right? No beads. Apparently they thought beaded jewelry was gang-related. It wasn't really the rule that was dumb, but the reason for it. In my last year of high school, the school issued a rule that all students had to wear student IDs. If you didn't, you had to immediately go and pay for another ID. Well, you could see how many students may have saw this as a way to skip class. 
The reason for this was the school shootings that happened the previous year. The reasoning that it would be easier to spot who is a student and who is not a student, to then see who has a malicious intent. Except that most shooters were... students. So... yeah, that didn't work. Closing boys' toilets because some guy stealing toilet paper. When school staff announced this stupid rule, some students actually threatened to poo on the tables. Once again, what is with schools and toilet paper and bathroom stuff? Oh my god. We were not allowed to have facial hair at all. Like to the point where the principal would walk around during lunch with razors and shaving creams to do stubble checks. Absolutely ridiculous, and he would send tons of us to the bathroom to shave during lunch, no matter how small the stubble was. You know what? You gotta do a power move for that one. Pull up with no eyebrows. That's facial hair. No eyebrows. And when they ask, you're like, oh, I'm not supposed to have facial hair. Hmm. And just drip the sarcasm. I got a suspension for holding a stick. The phone call from my mom went something like this, only slightly dramatized. Mrs. O.P., your son has been suspended. Oh my goodness, what did he do? He was holding a stick. Did he hit someone with it? No, he was just holding it. Did he threaten someone with it? No, he just held it. Did he refuse to put it down when you asked? No, no, he was very cooperative. So, what did he do wrong? He held a stick. And I should be upset about that. Absolutely. You should know we have a zero-tolerance policy. Right, well, I'll talk with him. As you might guess, I did not get in trouble at home. He has a stick! Call the police! Run for your lives! Playing cards at lunch was prohibited because it promoted gambling. Went to school during the time where health and safety suddenly started going crazy. They introduced a no-contact under any circumstance rule, as in no touching another person. We were like six or seven years old. Suddenly, one day, not only is tag suddenly illegal, but they actually enforced it. I remember one day, like 70% of the school's population was pulled off of the playground and made to sit on the floor in the hall for the crime of just playing games that children play. Oh, the horror! Oh! My school was in a poor area of Rio de... I cannot pronounce that. It's a place. Not a lot of schools here have money for anything. Because I have a huge donation of books at the time I was in school, my school got an absurd number of books, including expensive ones. There were a few dumb rules, but the dumbest of them all? We basically couldn't touch the books in the library without permission. It might sound reasonable at first, but check this out. The library was huge, and there were lots of books, including contemporary classics, nonfiction like The Last Problem, English literature like Infinite Jest, How to Kill a Mockingbird, and whatnot. Dude, there was so much of them there. That place was probably the most valuable place in that entire school. I mean, it was awesome. There were enough books there for each student to lend about a hundred every day. But here's the problem. The library went all but untouched for the entirety of my time there. Why? The amount of work it took to read one of those books was ridiculous, and pretty much made sure not a single student bothered to try. First, you couldn't take any of the books home, period. Forget the fact that they had your address and all your parents' info. So in the case that someone took it and didn't return it, they could just get it back. It happened before, at least once, before the rule was made. Second, you couldn't leave the library with them no matter what. 
Third, if you wanted to read the book, you'd have to do it in the library at the lunch break, which was about 45 minutes. So unless you weren't hungry ever, you only had a few minutes to go to the library. It was only open for a few hours around the break, and not at all at any other time. So unless you stayed there for hours until the break for afternoon classes, you just wouldn't have another chance. These hours around the break could be used for you to be tutored by a teacher, which almost never happened. Fourth, once you went through all of that, you could only read the book under the observation of the people that volunteered to work in the library for credit, which was never more than two or three people, sometimes no one. Which means if you got there and there were already three people there, forget it. Unless you were willing to read it standing up close to where the book was kept, and even then they check up on you every minute or so. Fifth, you couldn't get inside the library with a backpack, with food and groups, speaking without the appropriate uniform. You couldn't get into the gym one, for instance, with other books, earrings, necklaces, or anything like that could make noise while you were walking. Some were reasonable, but the issue was that one simple mistake, and you would just get banned. Sixth, any banishment from it was permanent. I complained about it once in the second year and was never allowed inside ever again. I even tried to get some teachers to help me, but it didn't work. Seventh, and probably the dumbest, only the students that had a certain amount of high grades could get any book at all. If you got something like a 4 out of 10 on your last biology exam, you couldn't even get inside the library. The standard was so insane, only six other students and I in my classroom had enough good grades to get books. In all my time there, the library was basically deserted for the majority of it. I tried to go there many times, but it was too much work. Out of all the books, I only managed to read two Brazilian ones. I can't pronounce that. Oh, The Lunch War. And Blackout, which I remember to this day in details. There were times I legit thought about straight up ditching class to read some of them. I tried to get more, like The Last Problem, Kafka's Metamorphosis, Ulysses, which I know wouldn't have been able to do it, but I was just curious. A brief story of time, Wuthering Heights, and so on. But the amount of work it took was so much that it was almost impossible to be able to read more than one or two books a year. And even that took dedication, because I basically had to sacrifice part of my lunch time. The rumor was that the principals, we had more than one, basically saw us as savages who would destroy the books if we were allowed to touch them, and even though they had no reason to believe so, the library worked well without these restrictions a year before it had gotten there, with only minimal incidents, and even those didn't result in the books getting destroyed. Oh my god! This isn't a rule. The guy made a full-on constitution for the library. In grade school, we weren't allowed to play on the playground equipment when it snowed. Eventually, we weren't allowed to play with snow or even go near it. I got in trouble for sitting in snow. This was in Minnesota, where it snows half of the year. Recess basically consisted of milling around the blacktop for 30 minutes. And that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed the stories I had for you. If you did, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, hit that notification bell, and check out my links down below. Now, I will see you all next time. Hasta la pasta.